Hi, I'm uh, Jason Kelly Johnson. I'm a design principal of uh, Future Cities Lab. Um, we are based in San Francisco. We're kind of a hybrid um, design, architecture, art practice, uh, think tank, hackerspace, um, located in, um, on 3rd Street um, in Dogpatch. Uh, the title of my talk is The City of Intelligent Machines. Most of what our lab is actually doing is we're sort of looking um, and thinking about the world that we're going to be creating with all of this technology, but we're doing so um, in, a, in a kind of envelope that's 20 or 30 um, years out. So much of the work is um, forecasting um, and beginning to think about the physical environment um, and the kind of the social, cultural, ecological implications of a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that, that you folks are um, really technically trying to figure out. Uh, and move forward. Um, so this is just a range of stuff. I'm going to show, I think, five projects today that, we're, we're, uh, that we've done really recently and a, and a project that we're actually working on um, in, the, in the near future. We do a range of things. Most of our work actually comes from, um, right now, from museums and institutions. We do a lot of um, what are called sort of installation projects, commissioned um, art pieces for places like SFMOMA. Um, um, in other Yerba Buena Center for the Arts in San Francisco, and then we're starting to do some work nationally and internationally. So this gives you a kind of a texture of, of what, we're, what we're doing. Um, this is a photograph of our lab. We call it a lab. It's actually, a, it's actually a kind of a hybrid condition. It's a really messy space to begin to kind of experiment with things. Um, you know, the core toolkit of our, of our lab is really sensors, um, kind of actuators, um, and of course, microcontrollers. We're, we're um, using and experimenting with, with a whole range of things from Arduinos um, to Raspberry Pis to sort of low cost um, um, processing um, devices and beginning to merge them with architectural um, um, things like building envelopes, um, chairs, screens, um, lights, sidewalks, elements of cities. So we're beginning to look at how these things begin to kind of merge. Um, we're certainly in, interested in, in appliances and refrigerators, but we're actually, um, I would say the focus of the lab is actually taking these technologies and bringing them out, exploring their implications on the, on the public realm, um, and that's the kind of the focus. It's a pretty intensive environment. We, we make uh, and fabricate everything that I'm going to show you today. Um, we've actually made it. We've, we've computationally derived it um, and, and found a way to kind of construct it in our uh, fabrication labs in, in Dogpatch. Um, and so it's a bit of a, a, bit of a, a mashup. Um, so within architecture as a, as a, kind, of a, of a kind of a discipline, um, we, we like to sort of situate what we're doing um, and describe it as responsive environments. So in this case, the intertwining of physical objects with things like sensors, actuators, um, and I call it low-level computation um, because it's really not at this point computationally intensive work. I mean, we're certainly um, engaging using the cloud to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us, but most of the stuff that we're actually doing are on really small, um, cheap um, um, computers. And the idea is to yield new interactive architectures. We're calling these things live models right now. We actually haven't scaled up to the scale of, a, of, a, of, a, of an architecture per se. We're, we're actually mostly doing smaller scale kind of experiments. Um, and we call these things live models. Architects, you know, if you guys have ever seen any movie with, it, with an architect in it, they're always holding an architectural model, right? And there's always like a, a static foam core model that they're, they're holding in front of you and saying, this is what it's going to be. Um, we're going we're to calcify um, some big idea, and it's going to exist for a 1,000 years, and we're going to make all of our clients famous, and our mayors um, are all going to get reelected. Um, our idea is um, we're actually looking at a mode within, within the world in which um, architecture becomes live, it becomes responsive, it becomes interactive, it might become kinetic, and certainly it's, it's, um, it's, 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 why it's connected to the Internet of Things. We do this in many ways. We get different um, folks coming us to explore. We have to pay the bills, and so we're actually extremely excited to do um, projects um, for um, companies um, like yourselves. This is a recent project. Um, we had a really great client. Um, the, the folks at Bitly um, approached us about four months ago to do a, to do a piece in, in the Bitly headquarters in Manhattan. Um, and they were actually interested in working with us, coupling us up with some of their programmers and letting us engage their, their kind of API, an expanded version of their API to create an artwork in their office. 
that allowed them in real time to understand the, the breadth and kind of depth of their data um, and also the kind of dynamics of their data in real time. So this is actually half of the piece in our studio and dog patch. So what we're basically doing is taking all of the bit.ly links that are being created in real time and we're translating them into a kind of data visualization um, that in a lot of ways this piece actually looks like a, it's almost like watching a slime mold through a kind of microscope. It's this fantastic evolution, um, hourly, um, actually minute. You can just see their entire data set evolving around the world. So there's basically five columns of data here. Um, the CEO, CFO, and all the technical team can basically walk in the room and actually understand if there's an event going on, some news is breaking, they can actually see the bit.ly links begin to kind of expand and contract. They see the kind of ebb and flow of their entire data set in a single kind of artistic piece. Um, and so our pieces are, are physical, right? In this case, we're using LEDs. Um, they're, they're, you know, embodying a kind of dynamic aesthetic, but they're, they're live and they can be reprogrammed. Um, they can be playful. In fact, these guys, at their Friday happy hour said, you know, we love this piece, we love data, but you know, we really love this idea of a fireplace um, or some, something that could actually bring us all together in a more playful way. Would you mind if we converted the piece into like a interactive fireplace on Fridays? We said, absolutely. So actually on Fridays they can flick a switch and this thing becomes a fireplace for them to drink um, bourbon and um, eat Mexican snacks around. Um, and so we make cultural things in offices that are both beautiful, um, data-driven, but also hopefully culturally meaningful. Um, we've done a bunch of projects um, in San Francisco. Um, this is a piece we did five years ago for a show at SFMOMA that was looking at the influence of Buckminster Fuller um, in the Bay Area. Um, and so we do a lot of work. A lot, a lot of times we're actually thinking really big. We're proposing projects that are at the scale of, let's say, a city. And then we're pulling those projects apart, little components of them, and exploring them in more depth. This is the edge of San Francisco. Um, this is actually right in front of the Gap headquarters where the, the Oldenburg sculpture is. And, and we're actually thinking about San Francisco in, in 20 and 30 years when climate change um, and sea level rise um, basically force us to reconsider our, our relationship to water. The Army Corps of Engineers more than likely will be building a large wall around our city to protect us from climate change. We're forecasting a new world in which we actually let that water infiltrate the city and we introduce new architectures on the edge. We call them hydromaxes. So these are massive um, responsive architectural systems that are predicting weather, um, they're, they're um, collecting resources, they're collecting fog, they're harvesting um, the fog to, to collect uh, fresh water. Um, we're, we're reintroducing farming into San Francisco, aquaponics, hydroponics. So this entire building is um, sort of set, set at the edge. It's also a public park. It's a civic space, an urban space. The idea is to completely rethink um, San Francisco's kind of core relationship with nature to embrace the, the artificial natures that are around us. Um, this is another piece where we were looking at a, a kind of a future. Um, I'm a huge fan of, of William Gibson. Does anyone else read William Gibson? You've probably all seen his films. William Gibson is a science fiction writer um, and he wrote, he's written a, several books about San Francisco in a kind of a, um, a, in, in, a in like a futurist mode and there's a book that's all, all about the, the Bay Bridge um, and, it's, and it's sort of situated there and it's actually looking at the, the, the advent of kind of augmented reality and what kind of, an, what kind of a new world might exist if we, we actually had people living out there and treated it like a, a kind of an encampment. So this is a project that we did recently um, for, for, a, for another show called Distant Futures in which we were looking at the reoccupation of the Bay Bridge. Perhaps it gets purchased by a, by a very large corporation. Maybe a, maybe a visionary nonprofit purchases it and reoccupies it and lives out there and uses that as a place to kind of experiment. So it's essentially a burning man in the city um, that's driven by, it's autonomous, it's driven by robots, um, it's ser searching for its own kind of energy resources. This is a large uh, model that we made that was actually here in San Francisco recently, um, cantilevered over Mission Street at the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts, and we were just looking at what this new world would, would look like if we calibrated our machines, our, our, our cities and our buildings and our machines um, to gather energy to participate in kind of, um, um, you know, um, resource um, generation. We'd bring farming into the city and we'd do this kind of, this kind of crazy sort of mashup. Um, and so this is the, these are the kinds of projects that we're doing. We're oscillating back and forth for, from big urban sort of um, visions um, that are maybe 30, 30 years out um, to other stuff. This is a very real project that we did um, almost 10 years ago in Union Square. 
Um, and one of the things that, we, that I noticed when I, used, when I used to live in New York is I used to eat my lunch in Union Square. Um, and you know, I'd be eating my lunch, and I'd look over at my bottle of water, and my bottle of water would be shaking. And I would think, either that's an earthquake, or there's something else happening in this park. And of course, if you do a little bit of, of uh, research into the, kind of the history of the park, um, a, it, it used to be a cemetery, but B, it's a kind of a hub for um, transportation systems. So the subway actually runs diagonally across the park. So I began to kind of think about that, and what are the, what are the possibilities of, of revealing that? So this is a project that actually places some LED um, quills um, right above the train line. So what would happen is the train would begin to kind of move uh, through the park. You'd actually begin to see and be able to predict the kind of flow of the train line to really connect the layers of a city through, through these kind of active means of, of visualization. So it's both poetry, right? It's both this kind of aesthetic moment. Um, it's like these floating fireflies in this park, but it's also quite useful because you begin to understand um, really this other layer. You'd understand how transportation would be kind of coursing through the city. Another piece that we just did for the Market Street Prototyping Festival is, is building on that 10 years later. Um, these, are, these are interactive pylons that would sit on Market Street um, that would allow you, um, there'd be many of them, maybe, maybe 100 of them up Market Street that would allow you to see where the trains were in real time. Um, it would kind of clue you into the, into the kind of the underground. Um, and this is just a view of it. And really, even if you weren't interested in the trains, the idea here was that we were actually th rethinking the, the kind of the light on the street um, as being something that's responsive, that would be data-driven, that would give you more, right? It wouldn't be just a utilitarian thing. It would be a poetic thing. It would be beautiful. Um, it would become a kind of community uh, moment. Um, data Grove is a project we did five years ago um, down in San Jose. This was a commission from the Zero One Art and, Biennale, Art and Technology Biennale, which is an amazing festival down in San Jose. They asked us to, to do a piece that was, um, was called Searching, uh, Searching for Silicon Valley. Um, the, the whole theme of this conference was to, how do, we, how do we actually find the center of Silicon Valley? You guys have all been there. Where is the center? Where do you go to actually find it? So many people come to visit me here um, in San Francisco, and they're all looking for Silicon Valley, and you just don't know what to say to people. And so we actually used the, we actually came on this idea that there's a lot of activity on Twitter. Um, people, people are actually posting a lot of uh, really fantastic things on Twitter. So we basically use the Twitter API to make a, to make a living, breathing, talking architecture. It's called Data Grove. Um, so as you move into this um, construction, there's sensors on Data Grove, and they, um, they track you. They know where you are. And so as you move towards it, it whispers to you. Um, so it would say um, something that was hashtag, hashtagged and trending within a half block of the site, it would, it would whisper that to you. So it might say, you know, honestly, at that point, it said, a lot of times it would say, have you heard the rumor, rumor about, um, you know, Kim Kardashian? Or it would say, you know, things that were on people's minds. But the idea was to make a place for social media, a physical place in the city. You weren't having to look at your phone or your computer. You would actually make a kind of a moment in the city where these things would be kind of revealed, a kind of a whispering wall or a, a contemporary version of, a, say, a fountain um, in, a, in an urban environment. And this is sort of it was built out of, of conduit, fiber optics, kind of the materials of Silicon Valley are the kind of native materials that, we, that we're working with. Um, this next piece I'm going to go through really quickly. It's called Light Swarm. If you guys are all in San Francisco tonight, this is at Yerba Buena Gardens, which is, which is kind of just behind me, I believe. Um, we were given a commission to, to activate this, this facade. Um, I love the architect of this building, but this building, um, it, it lacks a kind of urban presence. It basically sets up a highly reflective um, facade on, a, on a quite a beautiful garden in the city. So it fails on many, on many aspects. Um, and so this is the final, the final piece. It's probably the largest, thinnest project we've ever done. We can only, the project can only be eight inches off the facade. Um, and so that's the, the final piece. And really what the idea is here, you get a glimpse of it in this piece. We, um, we actually have a, have, a, have a computer that's running a program um, off to the side. That computer has a swarm um, uh, simulation on it. And so what happens is, um, as you walk around the building, both inside and outside, we wired the entire facade. I don't know if you can actually see it. I suppose you can see it there, right in the very middle. It looks like a little clear spider in the middle of that glass pane. Um, that's a vibration sensor. So the entire facade is wired with vibration sensors. So what happens is, as you walk around and talk in that space, this light swarm actually follows you. 
The idea was to make an artificial light swarm that trails you, again, like a, like a um, I don't know, a, a swarm of bees, perhaps. It's kind of a strange way to think of it. But it trails you through the space. Um, so as you move through the space and you talk to the facade, this light swarm follows you through the space. The idea was to make it kind of a sentient system that would respond to you, respond to users, and then when people aren't actually in front of it, it's actually actively seeking the loudest sound, both outside and inside the space. Um, I'm not going to play the video, I only have a few minutes left. You can go over and, and, and basically check it out. Murmur Wall is another um, commission which is also at Yerba Buena Gardens just across the street here. So if you walk through the garden towards the Jewish Museum, you'll, you'll find this piece. It's a similar construction. Um, it's a temporary piece that's only up for two years. It's clung onto a, a concrete wall facing Mission Street. It looks like this. And the idea here was to, very similar to Data Grove, to make a kind of a living, breathing um, a wall that you could actually see almost like veins. You could see the flow of data moving to it. Murmur Wall is also a social media aggregator. We've written an algorithm that takes um, everything that's actually trending within a half mile radius of Yerba Buena, and we're showing it on the wall. Um, the LEDs basically are helical, and so you actually see the flow of data. So as the data moves through the piece, it hits these, um, these 3D printed pods, and you can begin to kind of see um, um, data kind of come up on the pods, basically keywords. You can also tweet the piece. You can tweet your own keywords to the piece and kind of participate in real time. And there's a video, but I won't show it. This is the final um, bit. The last project I'm going to show is probably our biggest project to date. Um, it's in Washington, D.C. And it's two blocks away from Union Square, four blocks away from the, the U.S. Capitol building. Um, this is a commission from, from a, um, a group called the NOMA Arts Bid and the National Endowment for the Arts. Um, and it's being paid for, actually, by the, by the federal government, which means it's a federal arts um, commission granted piece. Um, it's located here. Um, you can see that this area, anyone that knows Washington, D.C. probably knows this area. Um, it's where all of these um, train lines kind of converge behind Union Square. Um, it's, a, it's a kind of a scary place. Um, it has been, for me, the Greyhound Station was there, so when I was a, when I was a student, I used to go through there. Um, these, it, it basically, the site is an underpass. Um, and so the idea with this community group was to kind of engage the underpass and, and place um, art and kind of architecture works that make it safer. So this is kind of the condition. And these conditions exist in our cities today. They're all over the place, all over San Francisco, um, Oakland, San Jose. Um, so this is an underpass that hundreds, thousands, thousands of people are moving through it every day. Um, hundreds of thousands of people move, here, move through here every, every year. Um, and so the idea was to kind of, kind of um, intervene in it. Um, so our idea was to actually engage the site um, by, by using the sounds and kind of acoustic um, conditions of the site, which are really slow moving trains, fast moving commuter trains, um, and allow that activity and energy to begin to, um, to you, know, you basically add a kind of dynamic element, element to the site. So we're using, again, um, vibration sensors. So it's a sentient architecture that as you move through and interact with it, it will begin to respond to you in real time. Um, this is the thing. It's basically about a football field long um, of these six lattices um, that are suspended. It will begin to kind of look like this. This is the beginnings of a mock-up in our studio in Dogpatch. Um, and this is the final condition where you'll be walking through and you'll basically be seeing these sort of very slow moving kind of wave patterns um, and responsive uh, kind of architectures through, through kind of LED um, lights as you kind of move through it. It's an intensive urban experience. It's useful, um, it's poetic, and it's gonna begin to bring a kind of, um, I would say a kind of dynamism to a site that is, is sort of sorely needed. Thank you very much.